Hi everyone, I hope you're good. Here is Bruce Newman, and today we're gonna speak about frequency. And of course, how to rise your frequency. According to chronobiology and, uh, and energetic circles, you can consider that when you're born, your incarnation is marked by something which is some kind of a energetical fingerprint from an incarnation to another your consciousness out of your body gonna select and choose a particular body in time and space which is surrounded by some special uh, vibration special energy special frequency and your consciousness is gonna instinctively choose these very particular points in order to work on itself during its incarnation and to rise its frequency. Because that's the purpose of incarnation, uh, rising its frequency. When consciousness is out of a physical body, a body-mind organism, it couldn't work on itself. It couldn't evolve on its frequency. It's stuck on the same frequency. You could ask the question, what pushes you to rise your frequency? Actually, rising its own frequency is not a choice. It is the purpose, the meaning, and the reason of the dynamic of the universe. From the emptiness, Big Bang appears, manifestation appears, and living organism appears, carrying a tiny part of the universal consciousness. And the dynamic of the universe is to push this tiny part of consciousness which are reduced incarnated and identified to those vehicles those body-mind organisms that they're using pushes them to evolve grow and realize the potential of a true nature which ultimately is not personal, but transpersonal. One incarnation after another, this consciousness are slowly realizing that they're not individual, but collective. And from this collectiveness, realizing that they're universal. This movement and this dynamic is completely automatic. It's called karma. Events, agreeable or not, and most of the time uncomfortable, appears on your life in order to push your consciousness to solve problems and by doing so becoming more flexible. By becoming more f flexible, this consciousness is opening some of the doors. Those doors are such as um, a letter, allowing them to pulse up and to open the realm of perception. Those fragrances are somehow linked to electricity, magnetism, and from this point you can understand that all these kind of different vibrations are no matter what the component of matter. Meaning by that by your thoughts. 
are, in a matter of fact, energy. And this energy is actually matter. You cannot touch the thoughts by themselves. But when the thoughts are involved in this process, which is called manifestation, then you can realize that you can materially touch the product of manifestation. If your thoughts want to manifest a chocolate cake, on some point this chocolate cake gonna appear, and you're gonna touch it materially. But in a matter of fact, what is the difference between you thoughts and this chocolate cake? Not much. Uh, uh, th th there's not much difference because apparently the only difference is time. But according to quantum physics, time is a concept which is way more blurry when it appears than in order to understand how much, how far you can rise your vibration. I would say that it goes step by steps from one chakra to another, you're opening different doors, different type of fragrances. Each energetical point or Ikudalini will open a new realm of perception, will lead you to be able to manifest higher events with more charge, more energy, and they would be more and more dazzling. But at the end, as a matter of fact, it's just the expression of manifestation. Ultimately, there's frequency from one chakra and one energetical point to another would rise until your frequency and your personal energetical points, your personal identification to a frequency would appear to be out of your body. From chakra to the heart, to the throat, third eye, seventh chakra, and then you will climb up to some other chakras which are out of your body. The vibration, the personal frequency which you're identified with, would become from personal, transpersonal, collective. Then even further, this frequency would be possibly the frequency of the entire universe which is called from the ancient times antique civilizations the Brahma all the mass of the universe and on this point your personal ego would be completely identified to the entire universe which is according to their beliefs an enormous consciousness by itself, extended consciousness. Those are the limits of vibration. Because out of the universe, then will appear or disappear any kind of vibration, and then emptiness would be unstable and this emptiness which is called by this ancient civilization para brahma out of a brahma higher than brahma is not really empty but you consider that is a substance in a matter of fact a paradox out of space and time. Full and empty 
on the center. Real. Present. But only in potential. Able to manifest anything only potentially. Out of space and time. This is the eternal present moment. This is immortality. To answer to the question, what is vibration? What is vibrating? Who is vibrating? I would make my best to go step by step. We can't consider the uh, phenomena of vibration out of the consideration of um, time and space. Consciousness is evolving as we perceive it through time and space. So let's examine first what is consciousness? This question, you know already the answer intuitively. I am. I feel, I perceive, I'm experiencing the world. That is you have a little background in education, you can understand that this is the consciousness experiencing the world. There is different state of perceptions. First of all, The physical body is perceiving things, signals, emotions. The belly is perceiving the hunger. There is as much neurons inside your stomach that there is in the brain of a dog. Neurons are in your body, everywhere on your stomach. There is a lot of neurons on your heart. And then, of course, your brain is composed by billions of neurons. And there's an electric movement, synaptic connections, which relies for. Still, what is my identity? Can I say that I'm the body? Am I the belly? Uh, of course not. Do any uh, surgical operation and uh, get removed from your stomach? An actual stomach could replace it. All of the stomach, you still exist and you still can perceive. Same with your heart. Already you understand that you're not pretty much this physical body, but you can think that you are your brain. And still, if you're your brain, if your identity is located on your brain, then which part of your brain would it be exactly? frontal cortex could be removed and you can still have perceptions. A part of the left brain could be removed and still we, you can have perceptions. Evan used to be uh, a man from France which has actually has been spotted as living with half a brain. Not exactly with half a brain, but almost. He had a very rare disease and um, all this coal was full of li liquid. And a thin part of brain 
was stuck all around his skull. Still, the neuronal connection used to reconnect to each other, and he was living almost normally. In a matter of fact, according to the studies of quantum physics, the essence of being, this feeling of being, is related to consciousness. And consciousness is not local. It's not located in your brain. It's not located in your body. From the studies, physicists goes to the conclusion that consciousness is not local. What does it mean? It means surprisingly that your personal consciousness is located out of your body. And then, by going one step further, you can realize that if this consciousness is out of your personal body, this consciousness is not personal. This consciousness is collective. Because it's the same for input. This collective consciousness is located out of the body. But still, and that is called the dial matrix. There is a framing. This illusion making you perceive the world personal. And this illusion remains uh, unless you did reach a really high level of uh, vibration, which is called awaken, the realization that this consciousness is uh, apparently uh, universal. This feeling of an individual being will remain out of the body, meaning after your death. Essentially, what does it mean when we say that the consciousness is not local? That the consciousness is out of the body. It means that your eyes and brain are perceiving information, data, which are actually vibrational data. And there's data going to be reorganized by the consciousness and provoking some kind of a feedback, a perception out of the body. Consciousness will still perceive data out of the body. Consciousness will still be connected by a uh, vibratory field receiving information the consciousness will reorganize all this data differently with half a brain meaning by that that after the death of the body consciousness is still active and still perceiving the sensation of seeing things, hearing sounds, will remain. Then we can go on this topic. What is perception? In order to delve on that, I would like to go further on the different types of body according to Advaita Vedanta tradition which are the following. You first can consider the physical body made of flesh and blood. That second body and second level of vibration would be what is called the subtle body. The subtle body composed by thoughts, emotions, 
and the different senses. Smelling, tasting, hearing, seeing. There is kind of an aggregate. And forming which is called an egregore. The subtle body could be personal and collective. It's important to uh, to say it. Mostly, the subtle body is composed by folk and sensations, and it's electricity, magnetism, energy. You you can't apparently touch his body. But as you may know, and from Einstein, like uh, matter is not much about energy in movement. Energy is matter. Energy is a vibratory phenomena such as matter. The only thing is that it's this energy is on a different kind of frequency. What I'm touching this pen. Actually, just the meeting of two different kind of frequency and those different levels gives the feeling of matter that this pen is solid. And in matter of fact, because there's two kind of frequency are different, a resistance is operating, and you just have the illusion that this pen is material. But of course, this band is just only energy. Then you will have a further state, which is called the body of silence. Silent body. That's what happens when you sit somewhere and start thinking and threaten yourself with emptiness, calm, peace. And then you can meet your own body of silence. This body is a state by itself. And still it's a sensation. Because silent by itself is still a state. Peace is still a state. Peace is still a frequency. In modern world, of course, we lose completely with connection, the connection with this body, this body of silence. It's very rare that people could really connect with it. Meanwhile, in Tibet, Buddhist monks are cultivating these states during their meditation. And some monks are qualifying others, saying, oh, referring to the deepness of the silence of this person, of this one. Then we'll have a fourth state. And the fourth state, it's called the Brahma. Transcendental body. This is a totally collective body. This is the body of the universe, which is still a state. The universe, did born on some point, will die at some moment. And as weird as it could appear, the universe by itself is afraid to die. And in the end, there's a, another body, and further, which is called, and I'm going back to that, Parabrahma. Up above the universe, before the origin of the universe, which is considered to be the source for the years. This state is a stateless state. This state is not peaceful. And this state is a paradox. On the way 
that in the account of the exist, but potentially. Which is interesting is that through this concept we can start to understand that ultimately consciousness is completely universal. Our consciousness is a matter of fact the consciousness of the universe. And that's the process of the divine matrix to make us feel that this consciousness is individual. These states that we're speaking about, the stateless state, power Brahma. In the Western world, we call it God. The state is not the aware of itself. Meaning by that, that God is not aware of itself. On this state, there is no consciousness. These states are conscious. And surprisingly, according to the ancient wisdom, this state, which is unconscious of itself, is actually our true nature. This is our real identity. That in order to answer to the question how to understand, how to realize which are the fragrancy of other people. There are different ways to perceive it. We can perceive it physically and in a matter of fact it depends from which point of view are we observing that? If I'm observing someone from my physical body with my eyes, a body will appear in front of me. Maybe this person is young, maybe it's old. I will have information. If I perceive this person from my subtle body, then I will perceive the emotion of a person. What is the emotional state of this person? I will have a lot of inclinations. You feel someone. You know, this person is angry, afraid, happy. Emotions are contagious. Then, if you observe someone from the upper body, body of silence you will have a lot of information as well what is the deepness of the silence that this person allowed itself to correct it and then ultimately there is something that I would call the different worlds there's the physical world, which we are calling the world astus, and the world up above. If yourself can reach even for a short moment, this sensation, feeling and experience to identify yourself to the Brahma, the universal consciousness, this upper body, ask of course for a lot of wisdom a lot of practice a lot of intuition that's to connect not to your mental intelligence but you to your emotional intelligence your pure intuition from the state as far as you're the ball the angle of perception will be wider. And then you can see a lot of things, you can have a lot of information. Even if it's just for a glimpse, a very short time. Because unfortunately we are normal people. We're not... We're not spiritual masters, we're students. 
but still as far as we're human this connection is always possible just have to want it practice it and recognize it shamans mediums are their own practice they connect themselves to intuition they can connect to their glimpses. spiritual masters can see even further they can see beyond space and time as far as a spiritual master is identify with the last states of perceptions when seeing you he can tell which were your precedent incarnations what were you doing previously 3000 years ago and what you will do in 50 years 20 years 10 years from this upper point of view the possibility to read all the map just comes up spontaneously space and time are a matter of illusion depending on your part of you according to quantum physics past he's still here and operating as a motor a mechanical process pushing you to the further end meanwhile future already happened and has a tremendous influence on your actions in a matter of fact according to physics present moment doesn't exist you're just evolving on some blurry layers of past and future which are completely educated still present moment exists but out of the manifestation present moment is a transcendental experience.